primarily and first and foremost, we are in the people business. And if you are great at pe- working with people, if you make them feel valued and loved, they will break their backs. As long as your mission is noble and you're a good person with high integrity, they will break your backs towards a common mission. Because here's the beautiful thing. We all internally feel at a human nature level that we want to be part of something bigger than us. And you as a leader, if you can, again, love and value people and get them pointing in the right, the right direction from a mission that you really care about, that's going to be very positive, you can move mountains. And and guess what? The people in your influence are going to do that. So you have to make sure they feel the love and they feel the value. Welcome to the Fitness CEO Podcast, a show dedicated to helping fitness entrepreneurs launch and grow successful gyms. Here's your host, Bryce Henson. Hey, welcome back, friends, to another incredible episode of the Fitness CEO Podcast, and boom, I am in the studio with my man, Pablo, who's my awesome friend and dear videographer, or dear friend and awesome videographer is what I was trying to say, um, and we're shooting an awesome podcast today, and um, this is actually a derivative questions that would ha- I was asked recently at a live coaching, and taking a step back, um, shooting this at the end of 2022, and in September... Um, end of September, early October, my, one of my best friends actually, um, who have been in the fitness industry for over a decade with, uh, he's our most successful franchise partner. He's launched 10 Fitbody Bootcamp locations in West Michigan, uh, and just an incredible dude and uh, very charged and on mission to inspire fitness, change lives uh, throughout the world, but specifically in the community of West Michigan. And he's been an incredible um, friend, I've learned a lot of, uh, from him over the years, and he's put together what's called the Domination Workshop. He launched the Domination Workshop in 2017 in Grand Rapids, where he's from and his locations are, and it was really in service of other Fit Body Bootcamp franchise partners to give the tips and strategies towards success, in addition to all the other support that we provide from a franchise or level, but really hearing best practices directly from the most successful financial franchise partner. and. Um, the few first years of Domination Workshop were absolutely incredible for obvious reasons in 2020 and 2021. We had to put a hole on that, but really in 2022, uh, Matt and his team fired uh, that back up at his uh, headquarters building in Grand Rapids, Michigan. It was absolutely beautiful. And I prefaced this just to give you insight to the event. Now, typically when we're at our mastermind meetings, we do them three times over the course of the year in awesome uh, destinations like Southern California or Orlando. Um, or uh, Nashville, Tennessee, which we just uh, finished our last one in the summer in Nashville. Um, And usually for those, I'm presenting, I'm organizing, I'm creating, and really putting the event on. But the nice thing about Domination, I was there along for the ride. Now, Matt's a business partner of mine, and both along with Barrett, my brother, who's our executive director of coaching profitability, and then both Matt and I, we lead the mastermind together. So it was a really cool opportunity for me to, of course, support Matt, but also just be there, be present, and engaged. The only ask that he had was that he was able to interview me um, for one of our, I guess, a live panelist in one of the uh, our presentations, just to really unpeel the hood of, I guess, my success and my trajectory through the Fit Body Bootcamp brand. Um, so uh, we took an hour, and it was a very, uh, he did an incredible job of interviewing me. There was a lot of emotion, intensity, um, and empathy uh, throughout, uh, filled throughout, throughout the room. And of course, having that you know, back and forth dialogue was helpful. I don't know if I'll be able to manufacture that same emotion. However, um, the feedback was really, really strong. We didn't videotape the event. And afterwards, uh, someone walked up and said, Bryce, I would love it, actually, if you can regurgitate that, shoot a podcast episode here at the Fitness CEO podcast, and be able to to, to answer the questions Matt asked you, and to provide those takeaways to your audience um, who are interested in fitness and business, entrepreneurship, and life. And I think there's some good takeaways there. So with all that said, um, he created 15 questions, and uh, it took us about an hour to riff through. So what I'm deciding to do today is actually split these questions up um, in two parts, so that way I can deliver this content uh, in a nice condensed form. You can get some big takeaways, and we can actually create two episodes from it. So that all said, here 
here we go with my man Pablo, and I'm going to go ahead and read off um, each question, then really just give my um, you know answer. And I made some notes while I was in Michigan, um, but I'll be able to reference those. But really, just kind of you know uh, share my experiences um, coming into the fitness industry. Previously, I was uh, not the epitome of fitness by any stretch of the imagination, and I think episode 86 has my origin story. So I'd highly encourage you to watch that. Um, but how this guy from the Midwest, that fitness was not his forte, ended up becoming uh, a personal trainer, then a Fit Body Bootcamp franchise owner, scaling to multiple multiple locations, becoming the vice president of the organization, and then ultimately becoming the CEO of Fit Body Bootcamp. So that all said, that's the framework. Here are the takeaways, or here are the questions I'm going to provide the takeaways. So question number one that Matt asked me, what not to do? So one of the things, or excuse me, forgive me, I can't read today. The question is the who not the what, okay? So what he was uh, talking about, one of the themes of the conference was finding the who who can help you, not necessarily the what, figuring out how you do things. So the question is, one of the things I've noticed, Bryce, is when you want to do something, you seek experts and outside counsel. Please share with us your thoughts and process how you go about doing that. And... As the CEO of an international fitness franchise um, and really studying being a student of leadership, what I've realized, the leader's job, yes, you need to lead with moral authority. You need to take action. You need to be leading from the front. And really, moral authority means do you talk your, or excuse me, do you walk your talk? And when you do that and your team sees that, they become inspired, okay? You cannot be over anything as a leader. Yes, as you grow as your leadership skills, you need to be able to delegate so that way you can elevate and lead your organization. But there's also times that you need to lead in the front lines, and that's a delicate balance. Um, But really, as you establish your leadership skills in my particular role right now, I visualize myself as the conductor of a symphony, if you will. Now, if you watch a symphony or orchestra, you notice the conductor is actually not playing any specific musical instrument. He has a team of incredibly talented people at his disposal, his or her disposal, being able to lead that charge and really fine tune and call on, you know, people who, you know, have certain skill sets and play certain musical instruments, whether the flute to the trombone or whatever the case may be. But the job of the leader, the orchestrator or the conductor, if you will, is really to make sure that everyone together works together in unison towards a common objective. And really that's how I look at myself as a leader. Yes, I need to lead with moral authority and take action and be on the front lines, which I do many, many ways. But there's also times where I need to take a step back and actually just put the the, the right people in the right seats to really make that magic or that music happen. Uh, And I think that's a really, really big valuable takeaway from your leadership perspective. You don't feel the need to do everything. Um, You need to be able to delegate, but more importantly, you need to take a step back and making sure that all your people on the right bus and they're in the right seats of that bus. So that way, when you conduct the music, if you will, it comes off in perfect harmony. Now that all said, um, it's really important to to seek outside mentors because you at the leader cannot figure it out uh, all, all by yourself. You need to be able to tap in to smarter people than you. And you have to be able to take a bit of humble pie and realize, oh shoot, I know this area and this is my zone of genius, but this is not my zone of genius. I need some help. And this is something that I've been able to do at least from Matt's perspective, but from my lens as well, exceptionally well. I look at it for what's called the language framework. And this is so simple, um, but if you were to learn a foreign language, and I use his wife, Madi, who is from Venezuela in the room. If, if, I was, if you were to learn a foreign language, in this case, if I'm trying to learn Spanish, it would make no sense to go to my mother as an example, which I love dearly, who doesn't, un- doesn't speak or understand Spanish. Pablo, my dear friend, who I just re- referenced to, who's my videographer shooting this right now, he speaks fluent Spanish. His family is from El Salvador. He learned that at a young age. Same with Mari, who comes from Venezuela. So if I'm looking at from the language framework, from that particular framework, and I need to find someone who, sp- or if I want to learn Spanish, I need to find someone who can actually teach me Spanish. Now, in the same token, I'll um, call back on Pablo again. If I was to learn, want to learn Mandarin Chinese, I wouldn't, even though I love Pablo. He is just an incredibly, exceptionally talented guy. He shoots a video that is absolute fire. He speaks multiple languages, but he doesn't speak Mandarin Chinese. I'm not going to go to Pablo and seek counsel on Mandarin Chinese. And I know that sounds like the most ridiculous example ever, but when you're a leader, when you're running your business, you have to look at the language framework. And that's a process that I look through that lens. Does this person know more than me in this particular zone of genius? If they do, and I need to learn that zone of genius, I'm going to go consult with that person. If they don't, I'm not going to. And to put another example on this, 
Um, at the time of this uh, taping, it'll have already been released. Um, but uh, I needed to, to raise what I realized. I need to raise a quarter million dollars in a, a marketing initiative that is going to 10x Fit Body Bootcamp, our brand, over the following uh, 24 months and two years. I'm so, so excited about that. The problem was I've never raised capital before. I didn't know deal structuring. So instead of twiddling my thumbs using that language framework, I thought, okay, my buddy Matt Wilbur, okay, is also a real estate investor. He understands how to raise capital. My buddy Sharon, okay, who has sold his company for $3 billion with a B, knows a thing or two about investment banking. That's his background. He, he knows how to uh, structure a deal. So those two gentlemen, in addition to many other, uh, I guess, mentors in this particular zone of genius, um, I consulted with uh, because I had not uh, taken action in that line before. And guess what? Uh, through a period of 60 days, by doing discovery, having conversations, hiring Sharon, uh, parting ways with money in order to gain the knowledge that I need, needed, was able to raise the quarter million dollars really within a two-week period, even though it was a 60-day process, to be able to put us in a position to financially uh, explode Fit Body Bootcamp from a marketing lens in 2023 and beyond. So that gives you an example of finding the who. It's about finding that person who's gone there, who's knowing, uh, who knows what uh, you're looking to accomplish and looking to learn, and then modeling their success. And that's what I've done um, very successfully, and I've used a few examples. And that's actually the value of joining a franchise system. And I was the same way back in 2012 when I launched my first Fit Body Bootcamp location in the city of Yorba Linda, California, which is in um, Orange County next to Disneyland. I had... I learned how to sell in my previous experience, but I had no idea how to market. I had no idea to do a group training and run a proper business. So instead of trying to reinvent the wheel and figure it myself, I partnered with the brand and ultimately became a seven-figure earner, exploded my business, and it's been one of the best decisions I've ever made to date um, because I looked for the who, who had done it in this particular case, the franchise of Fit Body Bootcamp. So there's no need for me to figure out the what when I can just find the who and take action, model that success, and become successful myself. So that is uh, the uh, insight to number one question. Question number two that Matt asked me, he said, Bryce, you do a great job of communicating to anyone you feel be affected by a decision um, or an outcome. Can you share with us why you feel this is important and how do you go about doing this? Well, I think first and foremost, um, there is a framework of leadership that I follow that I've created and constructed in my mind that served me well and communication is uh, a big part of that. It's number one, um, having clarity. That's the first C. Uh, number two is having courage. You have to have courage to take action to be a strong leader. Number three, you need to be able to create connection. Leadership is about creating connection with people. Okay. Number four, um, the, the fourth C framework of leadership is communication. You need to be able to communicate as a leader, both ver verbally, both um, written, um, speaking on stage, on a podcast, whatever the case may be, you need to be able to communicate in a var wide variety of modalities to be able to share your message and lead your people. And last is consistency. So that's the, the five uh, C's in the framework of leadership that I've built and really lived by. Um, but I would say communication is absolutely foundation, foundational to your success as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, and you need to be able to create a cadence of communication. So it can't be sporadic. Of course, you're going to be able to need to send targeted message at times, but you need to have a cadence when you meet with your team from a meeting perspective. What we, what we run is a system called EOS or Entrepreneur Operating System at Fit Body Bootcamp. And and we have L10 meetings with Stanford level uh, level 10, and the goal is to get a 10 out of 10 every time. The beautiful thing is we're able to provide feedback uh, after the meeting and say, hey, what went well, what didn't? But that all said, we have a regular cadence of meeting structure. We have a reg regular cadence of email structure, our franchise partners. Every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific time, a broadcast that now my team basically cr uh, creates and I sign off on a mindset message, basically gets pushed out with all the updates of what's going on from our franchise or perspective on a weekly basis. That is a strong cadence of communication. We have a strong quarterly cadence of communication where we um, discuss and basically present, and when I say we, meaning me, to both my franchise partners, also a different uh, quarterly state of the business, but also to our internal team. So that way, in a quarterly basis, both my franchise partners and also my teammates at HQ understand the big updates. And of course, it's consistent. It's on a machine. It's on a routine. And that provides a lot of value. So I want to start there because establishing a cadence of communication is really important. The other thing actually for that matter as well is um, Bedros uh, B, as we know from my uh, 
partner in crime in this particular podcast. He is the majority owner at Fit Body Bootcamp, uh, both him and his wife, Die. So I have a weekly cadence of communication that I send a quote unquote owner's box email every six p- every Monday at 6 p.m. to provide both B and Die the updates in terms of the franchise perspective. So I'm now showing many different ways that cadence of communication, it's so important. Of course, we also teach our franchise partners to do the exact same thing with their clients and their teams to have a, a regular email sense of uh, communication in addition to meeting schedule. So that way, everyone in their organization is on the same page. And as a Fit Body Bootcamp owner, that framework and that playbook is provided to you. So that all said, the foundation of the framework and the cadence of communication is important. And I look at it, my last analogy on this, as, you know, marching to the beat of a drum. When, you know, back in the day when they used to do, you know, wars uh, uh, got brought out and there are the two sides battling, how leaders would basically get their troops in a marching rhythm is by the beat of the drum. Okay, and that's really important. That cadence of communication is the beat of the drum to make sure that you're uh, that you're following, if you will. In this case, if you're a gym owner, your clients, your team understand uh, that uh, that flow and that rhythm of communication. So that all said, though, um, the secondary level of this is I always like to loop in other teams and departments as much as humanly possible because my job as the leader of the organization is I'm running air traffic control. Okay, it's not my job to, to fly the plane. It's not my job to sit in the crew. It's not my job to you know, do a lot of the granular aspects of the the business. All are extremely important. I have no idea how to shoot and edit video and make the marketing magic. My buddy Pablo does, and he does that incredibly well. My job is basically to run air traffic control and make sure everyone's on the same page. And that way there's no accidents, there's no collisions, et cetera. And effective communication, taking a step back, being aware of, okay, this decision was just made. Okay. We need to include this on the Wednesday broadcast. We need to include this in our L10 meeting. We need to include this X, Y, and Z. So that way it's distributed to the whole team because the whole team has to uh, understand and buy into your vision. They cannot buy in your vision unless they know which the direction they're going. So that's why from a thoughtfulness, from a communication perspective, it's very, very important. I certainly pride myself. Now on the flip side, I'm sure some of my teammates, my biggest critique was like, Bryce, you probably over communicate. And there's probably things you send that maybe we don't need to see. And I probably could be guilty of that, but I pride myself on this very, very, very rarely in my organization does uh, when I'm working with a team um, or a client or a franchise partner that they have no idea where this came from out of left field. And I pride myself on that in the spirit of strong leader. When you're leading your gym, your team, your clients, and your community at your local level, you need to have that strong cadence of communication that's built in the framework. And you also need to be able to run air traffic and control and make sure that everyone knows exactly the game plan is rowing in the same direction towards your particular target. So that is uh, my take on question number two. Going back into number three, Bryce, you do an amazing job of making feel, people feel valued. How do you go about doing that? Is there anything you intentionally do or is this, this something that you do? And uh, this one's probably pretty short and sweet. And uh, I learned it from my mother. So Mother Dove is our nickname for her. Um, she is the sweetest, most caring uh, person. And uh, I learned how to work with and treat people because of her. And it's been an incredible skill. So I would say partly it's factory installed and then partly like both um, nature and then also nurture in the sense that my mother, Donna, she nurtured me uh, to really value people. And um, I really take a step back. It's probably my biggest asset and I feel lucky and blessed. I genuinely love people. They light me up. I'm a people person. Uh, person. I have a high degree of empathy. Sometimes it actually works in my disadvantage and not in my favor. But for the most part, um, I'm very people centric. And again, I think it's factory installed. I think it's nature gave me that. And then watching my mother, Donna, see her influence and her impact and the value that she puts on other people was just really, really foundational to my development. And uh, as a leader of your organization, you got to be that person or you need to find someone on your team that is that people person that can lead people that can connect with people. It doesn't necessarily always have to be you. However, at a, at a, at a core level, you do have to have love and appreciation for people because people can sense that. And I feel like that's been a huge secret sauce. The last uh, secret sauce in my leadership, I should say the last bullet point on this. And I was reading a book uh, recently, a reread. It's probably read it a dozen times, how to win friends and influence people. And I think it's actually coming from this, uh, this content, but he talks about, um, 
Rockefeller and uh, John D. Rockefeller, who's the richest man in the world at the time, and what he did to look for talent. And he ended up hiring Charles Schwab, who was this right hand guy at the age of 35, uh, Rockefeller with this huge um, you know, steel company. Uh, literally, he was a titan of industry. And he hired Charles Schwab, okay, to run, uh, be a key player and run his organization. And Charles Schwab had no understanding foundationally of the steel business, okay? But the reason that he paid, quote unquote, Rockefeller paid Charles Schwab an insane amount of money, okay, millions of dollars in present day in terms of salary, because his ability to deal with, work with, value, and love on people. And uh, my friends, this is uh, an incredible skill set that I hope is factory installed for you. If it's not, you can still develop that. But really what we teach our franchise partners here at FitBody is way more than the nutrition business or the coaching business, the fitness business. Primarily and first and foremost, we are in the people business. And if you are great at pe- working with people, if you make them feel valued and loved, they will break their backs as long as you're mission is noble and you're a good person with high integrity, they will break your backs towards a common mission because here's the beautiful thing. We all internally feel at a human nature level that we want to be part of something bigger than us. And you as a leader, if you can, again, love and value people and get them pointing in the right right direction from a mission that you really care about, that's going to be very positive, you can move mountains. And guess what? The people in your influence are going to do that. So you have to make sure they feel the love and they feel the value. What's up, my friend? Bryce here. Now, you might know me as the co-host of this podcast and the CEO of FitBody, but what many people don't know is that I actually began my journey as a FitBody franchise owner. Now, being an owner, I wake up every day absolutely doing what I love. I live my passion. I help people transform their lives and have both financial and personal freedom. It's for these reasons and many more that other owners join the brand and open their own FitBody locations too. So if you're looking to build a highly profitable business, take charge of your life, and create an impact in your very own community, then opening a FitBody gym might be a perfect fit for you. Now to see if a territory is available in your area, as we have very limited spots due to our incredible growth, go ahead and visit our website at fbbcfranchise.com to complete an application. Well, thanks, and back to the show. All righty, number four, Bryce, preparation, the dichotomy of being being prepared and getting it right versus getting it done since, my friend, you only get paid for done. And that's something that uh, Vedro says all the time, which is so, so true. So I'm going to take a step back. And uh, interestingly enough, I, both with my buddy Matt and my buddy B, um, business partners, friends, um, and uh, just very, very people close to me. And I want to be I want to, I'm going to showcase an analogy on preparation. I want to be very clear from an actual uh, apples to apples perspective. I am not equating myself or comparing myself to the legend of Kobe Bryant or even Michael Jordan in this particular analogy, but I think there's a lesson to be gleaned there, and I'll be very clear on this. Kobe Bryant is a legend, an icon, a personal hero of mine, the late Kobe Bryant, I should say, Um, but I had the opportunity um, to befriend, uh, from an acquaintance perspective, um, Tim Grover, who is uh, a New York Times bestseller. Uh, He's written two books, um, at least big books, Relentless and then Winning was a recent uh, copy, and he was most famously known for being the personal trainer uh, to both Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Dwayne Wade, and the list goes on. Um, But he had spent a lot of time with both Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. And there was many similarities, as you would imagine. Their type A personality, uh, Barrett and I shot a podcast about the four bird styles. They're both high eagle, intense, driven, result oriented, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, And they they shared this winning um, mindset and this cutting edge and this cutthroat mentality. And there's a lot to be learned there. Obviously, two titans and, and two of the best in the absolute world and the greatest of all time you could you can make that argument for Uh, but they also had their differences as well and michael jordan uh, according to tim grover which you uh, citing him just had a bit more natural ability he worked hard he had this killer mentality but he was just a little bit more natural where kobe bryant it was a bit more manufactured and it came from the preparation, the diligence. Kobe had to work a little bit harder for the greatness. And my friends, humbling myself, that's the view that I have of myself. Um, I'm not the Michael Jordan. I don't have that natural natural factory installed ability. And if you're watching this or listening to this, I hope you do. I hope you do because that's awesome. And I'd be really, really proud and um, and uh, and just happy for you. 
But if you're anything like me and everything doesn't come naturally to you or it's not factory installed, um, a lot of business acumen and things of that nature that will progress your business, then similar to Kobe Bryant, Bryant, you're going to have to work a little bit harder. Now, yes, Kobe Bryant had many naturally given talents. He was 6'6 or 6'8, he had an incredible wingspan. But in own in his own words, he wasn't the fastest, he wasn't the tallest, um, he wasn't the best naturally at any given skill set within the basketball arena. But what he did, his work ethic was legendary. His preparation was legendary. And for me, I learned this from a mentor from afar, Ed Milet. He says that the separation is in the preparation. And my friends, if you can define my career, I would just say that any time that I put the effort in, I prepare, which I do all the time, the result tends to be better. I don't have that natural ability. I don't have a lot of factory installed gifts um, with the exception of you know having an amazing mother and family, caring for people, um, and, uh, and a few others, as you would imagine as well. But really at my core, I really believe my identity and my level of success, the separation has been a direct correlation from the preparation. So from my perspective, yes, there is a viewpoint uh, in the extremes, you can be extremely prepared and, you know, have an analysis by paralysis, you know, look at things and almost be so prepared that you actually never get it done. I'm not saying to do that. That will actually cause more hurt than, than good. And that's the perfectionist type mentality. I'm not saying go to that extreme because that actually can inhibit you. That will inhibit you, I should say, but you need to have a high level of preparation. And if you're willing to put in the work, if you're willing to put in the reps, I can tell you with for certain, with certainty that the result will be more favorable when you do. So that is my viewpoint on preparation. I live by it. Um, I breathe it. I uh, exude it in my existence. And I would highly implore you if uh, implore you if you're serious about launching a business, uh, launching a fitness business that has massive impact on your community, you're going to have to prepare more than you think is so in order to, to achieve that level of success and fulfillment that you're destined to. And most importantly, your clients, your community, your team are destined for as well. All right. Uh, moving along. Um, consistency. So here we go. Bryce, you are one of the most consistent people I know. What do you feel allows you to be so consistent and how important it is for your leadership? And um, again, going back to the five C's of leadership, which is my framework, um, clarity, courage, connection, communication as reminders, and then consistency. And consistency, holy smokes, it's the foundation. It is the base. Um, you can't look at a good leader, someone who started an incredible movement, if they've lacked consistency. Consistency at, at a root core, especially from a leadership perspective, from a movement perspective, is trust. The more consistent you are, the more trust you have. And there's a book called The... Um, the oh, shoot. Uh, the name escapes me. The Five Dis Dysfunctions of a Leader by Patrick Lencioni. And uh, he talks about at the foundation, any team, any organization, any mission needs absolute trust. So I have a duty, obligation, responsibility from a leader perspective, continuing to be the best person I possibly can, continuing to better my character, be, to continue to develop myself at the highest level possible so that I can garner more trust within my team, within my clients, within my organization, because trust is the foundation. Without trust, I have no leadership capital. And the thing is, is I have to earn my trust every single day. It doesn't matter, you know, what success I've had. It doesn't matter I've launched five Fit Body Bootcamp locations, you know, in six years. It doesn't matter that I became the vice president of an international fitness franchise, then became a CEO. That has literally no bearing at all the way that my team, my clients, and my global community look at me. I have to earn my stripes, my leadership stripes every single day. And I do that by being consistent. And yes, it's rigid. Yes, it's boring. I actually have a boring life. Um, it's interesting. You look at these big influencers and you know these titans of industry and these entrepreneurs that have just amazing, amazing success. When you break it down and when you actually look under the hood, they have very simple, very basic, and very boring but very consistent lives. And uh, that is a bedrock of my leadership. And certainly, is there opportunity for improvement? Yes. I'm just thinking to myself, like there's always ways that I can adjust and tweak and become more consistent. As an example, the weekly broadcast to my team um, goes out at 5 p.m. on Wednesdays every single uh, Wednesday Pacific time. That is important to have a cadence of accountability, a cadence of trust. My, leader, my Tuesday leadership message to my team goes out on Tuesdays at 9 a.m. Pacific time. 
a cadence of accountability, a cadence of consistency, a cadence of trust. So really to put a bow on it, those are a few tangible takeaways that I want to provide you that you can start being more consistent. Of course, you can be more consistent with your workouts, your eating schedule, sleeping schedule. There's amazing, there's a million ways you can be more consistent. Hopefully I've shared a few takeaways that will help you on your leadership journey. All right. The last two questions I have for today. Um, the next one, number six goes down to loyalty. Bryce, you're loyal to your core and you honor people in private. What do you feel makes you so loyal and why is this important? Um, loyalty is, is everything. It's, it's trust, it's consistency. These are all different lenses of the same idea and concept that we're looking at. I would say from a loyalty perspective, um, and again, going back to the bird episode, uh, the personality styles with the four birds, typically speaking, your dove, uh, which stands for the S is actually in the disc for supportive are typically your most loyal people. I have a very low dove, which is interesting. And my mother, Donna, she, she's a high, high, high dove and she birthed two eagles, which is really funny, actually, if you, if you take a step back and think about that, but, you know, seeing her focus on others, be a servant leader and be deeply, deeply loyal, um, is a lesson that I learned, um, you know, a long time ago. And, uh, I also think that, and sometimes it burns me but for the vast majority of times I look for the good in people. I'm a pretty trusting person. I also think that's why from a, a team perspective, people are good with following me. As an example, I was just talking with, um, Pablo after, uh, or before this particular shoot, and uh, we want to actually change the branding to the Beyond, the, or change the logo to the Beyond the Scale podcast. And I was like, that sounds like an awesome idea. Um, they have the vi- Pablo has the vision for it. He's me working with Mary Catherine, who uh, is a, f- uh, a f- fit body franchise partner in Virginia, who's going to be the face of our global clientele because she's a Mrs. Jones, who's our client. And she's also an involved Mrs. Jones as well, who's, who's done our first transformation in the fitness industry and their second transformation in the financial industry, becoming a Fit Body Bootcamp owner. Um, but this all to say, they have a great de- idea. They have a great vision for it. I got to trust them to execute. At the end of the day, in the grand scheme of things, is the logo going to make or break the show? Probably not the content is going to, the guests, the value that we provide. So I need to take a step back and value people and trust people and be loyal to people to give you an example from a leadership perspective. Um, I also think to kind of put a bow on this particular example, um, I learned at a very young age and I shot a, uh, one of the, the episodes that was just released was a riff that Bedros and I did um, where he interviewed me. And it was a really cool kind of look. Uh, and I believe it's released if it's not it's uh, already recorded and it will be released. Um, it's an interview. Uh, it's a, a riff that him and I did on, on this particular channel. And uh, he actually interviewed me, which is re- really cool. And I kind of sh- showcase a little bit my origin story about, you know, the chaos and the, the challenge for first world standards that my family had to come up through. But what I learned in that, and especially having to escape from my father uh, because of the, you know, just the addiction and things that he had in his life that wasn't serving him and ultimately wasn't serving us. And it was a very, very challenging time, as you would imagine, especially for my mom who had been out of the workforce for over a dozen years. And, uh, you know, we ended up living with my grandma where my brother and I shared a room. My grandma had a room, my mother and Donna shared not only a room, but a bed for better part of 10 years. Uh, but seeing us kind of work as a family unit and seeing the loyalty of my grandma being able to like house us, otherwise we would have probably been on the street or some sort of home, um, you know, for single uh, parents, it could have got ugly really quickly. And I realized when I look back at from a foundation, perspective, my family unit, um, even though it was very rock, rocky and volatile because of my father, uh, really provided me a, lo- a good glimpse into loyalty. And so I, you know, kind of bring a bow on this. I owe it to my mom and I also to my wife, Tatiana. She's an incredible loyal person and watching her, we met in 2010, um, and seeing her growth and seeing who she is a pertinent person or character has also, you know, taught me a lot. So this all said, bring it back to you. Um, the better leader, the more loyal, uh, the, the more loyalty you have to yourself and team, the better leader you are. Uh, and that's a great uh, takeaway, especially if you're going to lead a really uh, strong organization that's going to impact the lives of other people. All right, my friends, well, we're uh, wrapping up here in terms of part one on uh, this particular Q&A, which again uh, was founded from the domination workshop that my dear friend Matt Wilbur um, and his team put together in Grand Rapids, Michigan. My last question for now is priority management. And he, he said, Bryce, how do you go about figuring out what is priority and um, 
and what you are going to be put up, put your time and energy to. Also, well, I guess that, that's uh, the, the final thing there. There's a little bit of redundancy in the question, so forgive me on that. Um, but that is the secret sauce, and that is a very, very hard question to answer, but it's a very important question to answer. And do I have it all figured out? Does anyone have it all figured out? No. However, as you get better at the business game, you can realize, okay, what are priorities? Okay, and what are um, not priorities? What are urgent things that seem like a big deal that are fires, but really at the end of the day, don't move the needle. And I think that's the big call to action. And really, um, the best way that we've been able to do that at the franchise or perspective that's allowed me uh, the space and learning aptitude to be able to execute priorities better is by linking up and partnering with the system EOS uh, Entrepreneur Operating System. And I was actually had the opportunity to, to interview Brian Underhill, uh, who's our EOS implementer um, and inter- implementer here at Fit Body Bootcamp headquarters. And it's one of the earlier show notes at uh, or early episodes for the Fitness Franchise Podcast before we rebranded. Uh, so I'd highly encourage you to look for that episode because I think there's a lot of big takeaways there. But one of the uh, core units of uh, EOS is establishing priorities on a quarterly basis, uh, which they call ROCKS, which is derived from Stevie, Stephen, had, uh, Stephen Covey, I believe. And ROCKS, uh, the reason they're called ROCKS is they're big priorities. And if you take a step back, the old analogy, how do you eat an elephant? one bite at a time. How do you execute a, a year-long business business plan? One quarter at a time. And the analogy that he uses uh, that we, uh, he came up with the concept of rocks is say you have this jar, which is symbol- symbolic of time. Okay, you only have a fi- finite amount of time. Okay, but if you had to fit basically pebbles, sa- sand, pebbles and rocks, okay? If you put in the sand first, which which symbolizes the smallest, like least important things, then you put in the pebbles, okay, which are a little bit more significant, and then you put in the rocks, okay, in that order, sand, pebbles, and rocks, unfortunately, in the jar of time, you won't have enough space to fit in the, uh, the rocks. And actually, I said this opposite. <laughs> um, I know I said that correct, actually. Forgive me on that. Um, if you put in the sand first, if you put in the pebbles second, and then you put in the big rock, uh, try to add the rocks at the end, which are signify the priorities, the biggest things that are going to move the needle on your business. Unfortunately, the rocks are not going to fit in that jar. And that's a great analogy of time and of life and of business. On the contrary, if you put in the rocks first, the big priorities, the big needle movers, okay, first and foremost, then you put in the pebbles and then you put in the sand, which signifies the smallest minutia, the mediocre stuff, which can sound in the moment like big fires and urgent things. But if you actually you take a step back and realize, are this is this a rock? Is this a pebble or a sand a piece of sand? When you look at it through that framework, decisions become easier. Also, implementing and executing the EOS framework of executing rocks every 90 days becomes a lot clearer. And now when I look at a business meeting and I'm looking at my rocks, the key core fundamental things is an example. One of the things I opened up with was the marketing mission that's going to 10x our brand over the coming two years. Um, if I didn't have that rock f- first and foremost on my uh, vision board on a 90 day period, other meetings and uh, other people's priorities could have gotten the way, but because I took a, a, a streamline and focus approach and making sure that rock was moved. And I hired my friend Sharon. I got the co- coaching consultant from, you know, Matt Wilbur and Bedros and my leadership team with Barrett and Joel and Brittany and Jessica, in addition to seeking other outside counsel, if I wouldn't have made that a big priority, I could have easily got lost in the minutia and not execute that rock or that priority. So hopefully that makes sense and really providing you some framework uh, on the value of, of putting priorities first. And hopefully that analogy really worked for you, but also too, giving a strong recommendation and the value of a franchise system like we have at Fit Body Bootcamp, we have systems and processes already set up. Uh, so that way the average owner with the average IQ, with the average work ethic can come in, okay, and execute our business model and be super successful uh, to grow their income through impact in their community, which is the vision. So that all said, my friends, this concludes part one. I know you got some good takeaways, but my big call to action is implement those takeaways in your business or in your upcoming business launch. And that way you can have a lot more success in the process. So without further ado, I know you got a ton of value. Assuming that you did, give us a like, give us a subscribe on YouTube, write some amazing reviews and drop your biggest takeaway in the comments. That way we can gauge. And my friend, we'll see you in the next episode.